Hi guys, welcome once again to NBT. In today's video I will show you how to create a CSV file from an array of CDTs, although the source could be any other data set like dictionaries or arrays. First of all, if you guys are not familiar with the CSVs, it is a comma-separated file, it can be opened using Excel or Google Sheets. The final file is similar to a spreadsheet with the difference that CSVs files have no format like bold text, formulas or cell size. At least, we cannot give format to a CSV file from Appian. Let's get started. The first step is to create our CSV template. For the A1 cell, let's place the tag data. Remember Appian uses the triple hash symbol in order to identify tags in docs. Once the template is created, we upload it into the Appian application. The second step is to create an interface with a grid layout in it, where we will create and display the users, also, a button layout with the cancel and submit buttons in it. Additionally, the interface has three rule inputs which are, an array of users, cancel variable that will be populated true once the submit button is clicked, and the headers, which is a text array and it will be used to display the grid's headers dynamically later on. Además, contamos con tres rule inputs, un arreglo de CDTs de tipo usuario, cancelar, que se llena con un valor verdadero si presionamos el botón, y headers, que es un arreglo de tipo texto que nos ayuda a desplegar de manera dinámica los encabezados del grid. Now, I will explain step by step the interface's components. In the grid, headers are created dynamically, based on the text array we have as rule input. This is particularly useful if you need to create a reusable interface with dynamic rows and columns. For the rows we follow a similar approach, let's loop over the user's array parameter using the for each function. With the grid row layout function, one row will be created for each item in the array. As you can see, there are three different kinds of fields in the same row, text, integer and date. These and most of the fields in Appian share the same display and save structure, which are performed respectively in the parameters, value and save into. Just for these two properties, two different syntaxes are used in order to access to the same value, using the index function which is read-only, and the dot syntaxes, which is useful for both read and write, but as I mentioned in other videos, dot notation is not good for the read-only approach, due to if in this case the user object is empty, Appian will throw an error, error that could be avoid using the index function or the properties function that behaves similar. The third step is the add row link property, which is populated with a dynamic link. That link has as value the empty structure of the user type. This is one way to create or fill CDTs from scratch and is done using the type prefix. It must be surrendered by single quotes and includes the namespace. Appian will provide suggestions after type bang is typed. If you go inside the parentheses you can see the CDTS fields, that way you will know which you will populate and which not. For this exercise all will be blank. Si entramos en el paréntesis, podemos observar todas las propiedades de nuestro usuario y así saber a cuáles darle el valor. Para fines prácticos en este ejercicio lo dejaré. Next one is the save into link. I decided to do it this way in order to explain a particular scenario. Just for demonstration purposes, I will add another user type rule input, placing this rule input alone in the save into section. The function save will be automatically executed and the rule input will be populated with the value in the link, in this case, an empty user CDT. The behavior for the second saving is different. The target is the same rule input but now we append the link value to an existing list of users and then save it into the rule input. In other words, if you have a list of 10 users, every time you click on the link, one user will be added to the list. This is done with the append function. In order to manipulate the value you are about to save into the target, we use the save bang value syntax. I have seen in other projects things like, saving the link value in a local variable only to use it as value in a save function. Using the save bang value syntax is more efficient. Ahora ya saben cómo hacerlo más eficientemente. Cuarta parte, los botones. Next part, buttons. Both of them must be submit buttons in order to move out the interface. If it is not a submit kind then you will never leave the script. As you can see, the cancel button has the validate property set as false. This is because usually, you don't care about the validations when canceling the form. This setup depends on the business rules, but this is the most common scenario. Ignoraremos todo eso, ya que no nos afecta. Claro está que esto depende de las reglas de negocio, pero es el escenario más común. 
Let's move on to the format of the info we are going to write into the CSV file. I have created an expression rule with a user type array and a headers array. These headers are the names of the CDT's fields, exactly as they are written in the CDT. I have my test data commented above the code, but you could easily create a test case for this. Using these parameters we have the following result. I will show it in raw format so you can understand better. In the first row, headers are shown separated by comma which is done in the 43 line for each. After each element a comma is added and only for the last one we add a line break using the character 10 from the ASCII code. The rest of rows are generated in the line 47. The for each loops over the user's list, the expression part has A with function in it, where the current item is stored and also an additional variable to know if current item is the last one in the row. In the same with function, there is another for each, but now it loops over the headers. The first element in the for each expression is a chart 34 which represents a double quote. Next. We access dynamically to the current user property, using the current header by passing the FV bang item to the local user variable using the braces. Next we close the double quotes. This is in order to prevent errors in the cell content in case the text you want in that specific cell has a comma. This additional comma would split the cell. A good example for this would be, hey, comma, good morning. These sentences must be surrendered by double quotes. If it happened to be the last header, and also the last user in the array, then no comma or line break is placed at the end of the row. However, if it happened to be the last element of the current row, then a line break is inserted right after the comma. This logic is kind of complicated. Feel free to go back the video all the times you need. Next step is creating the process model. In the first node we store the list of headers as an output. Second node, call the interface, as output the list of users and also the cancel variable. Third node, XOR gateway, which decides whether going to the cancel flow or continue with creating the document. All this based on the process variable. Fourth node, call the expression to format the information, and save the output in a text process variable. Let's emphasize this is not an array. Fifth node, using the text doc from template smart service, let's select the template, set a dynamic name for the new doc, select the folder where it will be stored in, or the tag called data, we will pass the process variable CSV data, which contains the previously formatted text. In the outputs tab, from the results select the new document and save it into the process variable of document type. This variable can be created as shown here. Y lo guardamos en la variable de tipo documento. Seventh step, paso, save and publish, then start the process for debugging. Con el clic derecho sobre el right click on the user input task node. Form. Let's add three new Agregamos users, then click usuarios. on the submit button to continue with the process flow. Y le damos submit para continuar con el proceso. Como podemos As you can ver, see, the flow has reached the end node successfully. Analyzing the variables, we can see that the cancel variable has no value. CVS data variable is a string separated by commas. The new document has an ID. And the user's variable has the values from the interface. In order to see the newly created document, it is necessary to go to the folder where it is stored. Let's filter the objects by folder type. Our new document is the first row. Let's download it. And we are done, this is the final result. The greatest perk of this approach over the export data store entity to Excel Smart Service, is that the data can be manipulated before creating the CSV file, also the information can come from any source. If you like this video please subscribe, and add a comment below as what should be our next video about. Remember, this is NVT, thanks for watching.